I'm going to walk you through the basic setup of a Dowell recorder with the 4.0 GUI. First thing I'm going to do is select our region. Next. Agree. Set our time zone. Don't worry about the time right now. Choose a uh, password. It has to be a medium or hard level password. So just for today, we're going to go admin one two three four. Click OK. Choose an unlock pattern if desired, or you can skip. Reserve email. So you're going to put your email address in here, the customer's email or your company's email. This will assist you in doing a password recovery or password reset in the future if the customer forgets their password. With the Dowell mobile app, there's a password reset process, but you will have to have an email logged into the machine to make that happen. Okay, uh, nothing really needs to be changed on this screen here. Uh, I do recommend though moving your mouse speed to slow. Uh, that way your double clicks uh, will be more accurate. Okay, on here we have our time zone already selected. So we're gonna do enable DST. We're gonna do it by the week. Second Sunday, 2 a.m. in March. November, first week, Sunday, 2 a.m. We're also going to enable NTP. This will automatically sync up with an NTP server, giving us the accurate time and date. We're going to hit next. Next again, um, we're going to modify our IP address. You're going to want to go ahead and plug this into a router uh, that's uh, on the network. Go to modify and enable DHCP. All these are going to go zeros. Uh, it's scanning the network right now. Uh, the network host is handing out its uh, DHCP address to the device. We'll hit OK. See, we still have zeros here. Don't worry about that. We're not going to do anything with this bottom section. Leave that alone. Next. And then right here, we see it says it's offline. We're enabled. Our P2P service is enabled, but we're offline. We should see this go online here in a second. There we go. We are connected. With the Dowell mobile app, DMSS, you can get that from your app store. Uh, when you go to add a device from there, you're going to scan this serial number on the right-hand side. So this QR code basically has the serial number embedded, and uh, this is what you'll scan with the mobile app to add it to the device. Click Next. So we see our added to cameras here. Um, we have six IP cameras plugged in. They're automatically going to initialize to the recorder. Since we have assigned a username and password to the machine, the cameras that are connected uh, to the internal PoE will automatically initialize and adopt that same username and password. Next. Recording schedule. How do we want to record? Are we doing general 24 hours a day, nonstop, or do we want to record on events in motion? If so, we're going to click this gear tool on the right. And I want to record general and motion, and I might be doing some IVS rules. Those are going to be uh, indicators on my timeline, helps me do my investigations better if I can accurately find those events based on motion or tripwire or uh, intrusion zones. So these are my recording methods I want to do. I'm going to copy them to all my days, and then I'm going to copy them to all of my channels. Next, we're not worried about snapshots. We're going to go ahead, OK, and we're completed. Now we're going to log into the machine and we're going to go to camera. So again, we went through our basic setup, uh, our quick setup guide. Now these are our admin settings on the bottom. If we want to make any changes, we're going to do it down here. Go to the camera list. Um, well, let's go to encode. Here, we want to make sure that our camera's compression is H.265. Sometimes it might be 264 by default, but we want to go through each camera and make sure that it's 265. And then you can set your desired uh, frame rates uh, as needed per channel. And you'll have to go through each channel to make those changes individually. We want to make sure that the substream is also enabled. That's very important. Camera names. We can go through and label each channel, give it a, a custom name, and that will appear on the screen. Okay, well, let's go to network. See our IP address has changed here. That's not what our local IP is going to be now. If we want this remotely accessible by IP address, and we're not going to use the, the P2P service, but we want we need to do port forwarding. We need to port forward this address, um, and we need to open these ports, the TCP port and port 80. So 37777 and 80. 
needs to be port forwarded, and then you would remotely connect to this device by using the public IP of your uh, internet service. Storage, let's go to schedule. So we set this up in our quick setup guide. If we need to make changes, we go in here and modify as needed. Disk manager, if we want to format our hard drive, after we're done with all of our programming, we might want to format the hard drive, wipe it clean before we turn it over to the customer. Uh, record estimate. So we've got six cameras connected here. It reads the resolution, the frame rate, the recording schedule. How many, how many days recording am I going to get out of this? I click by time. I'm sorry. Uh, click select. Choose the hard drive. Apply. It knows that I have a two terabyte hard drive. I'm going to get about eight days based on my recording settings here. But I could also go in and say, what am I going to get if I had an eight terabyte hard drive in here? I'm going to get 34 days. So this is a easy storage calculator built into the machine. Okay, so we're gonna go to system. Um, again, nothing really needs to be made here out of the gate unless you wanna do something special like uh, log out time. Uh, 10 minutes of idle time, the system will log you out. If you change it to zero and apply, it'll never log you out. The system will always stay logged in um, unless the system reboots, then you'll have to log back in. Non-login user permission, what's this? Let's say this is a, an area where you want a covert camera, a back office camera, an area that you do not want displayed in the live view when you're logged out. So you would just deselect the cameras that you do not want displayed when you're logged out. Click OK, apply, and then I'm going to log out. So we have our other cameras, but we do not have channels one and two. Unless we log in, now those cameras are back, right? So you can find that in the non-user login uh, area. Okay, uh, date and time. As you can see, we have the uh, correct date and time. It is in fact uh, 2.39 um, Central Time. The reason it automatically pulled the time was because we had the DST enabled accurately and we are subscribed to an NTP server that is automatically updating our time for us. Security settings. Um, if you need to make any sort of uh, security ser service uh, changes, you don't want push notifications, you don't want OnVIF devices, you can make these uh, changes in here. If you need a certificate, those are also found in here. In account, this is where we're gonna add users if needed. So we have our admin, that's our, that's our number one login. But we wanna add users. Let's say this is a daycare or we need additional users but we do not want to issue them certain rights. So we're gonna give them a username, password, confirm the password, and we can deselect what they're able to view on playback and live view. So we can uh, get very granular with their permissions. Okay, so that is the basic setup area. Now, if we're gonna do motion recording, we need to go into alarm, video detection, and in motion detection, we need to make sure it is enabled. We can go into the setting and deselect the areas we do not want to trigger the motion. Hover at the top of the screen and we'll get our sensitivity and threshold areas. 80 and 5 is about a good number, but you can play with it to see what's good for you. Right click and hit apply. Before you change to another channel, make sure you hit apply. Okay? So you'll just want to go through and make sure that the motion is enabled for every channel you're doing motion recording from. Now, we also might want to do IVS rules. That's a, our intelligent video uh, settings. Uh, tripwire, um, intrusion zones. So we're going to AI, parameters. We want to enable the smart plan. So some cameras might have a feature like face detection, but we're going to use the IVS rules. So I'm going to go to IVS and enable that smart plan on that camera. Then I'm going to go to IVS and create a rule. I'm going to add, I'm going to make a intrusion zone. So out here on this porch area, I want to know, I want to trigger my event recording or push notification if somebody enters the porch in this box. So it could get up here in the box, cross the line, either or, click OK and apply. Okay, so I'm going to enable some smart plane on some other cameras here. So in channel two, 
I'm going to add a rule here. Now this is an AI camera. So this is the N45 EM63. This has some special features uh, for object classification. So I'm going to draw my box out here. If a human or a vehicle enters or crosses this line, I want to know uh, the target filter. It was it a human or a vehicle. I can have these uh, classifications noted on my playback history and my push notifications. Click OK and apply. Now we see an option down here called SMD. So my channel five here is an SMD camera. As long as I had motion detection enabled in the alarm section, I can enable the SMD feature. So I don't have to go in and do any sort of granular settings, deselect certain areas, I don't wanna trigger the motion. I'm only gonna have these effective targets trigger my alerts. So I'm not gonna get bothered by rain, lights, bugs building, uh, being attracted to the IR, a spider building a web in front of the nest. If I use the SMD technology, it will only trigger upon human or vehicle classifications. And hit apply. Okay. So we'll go back out to the main menu here and we can change our views, single camera view, multi-channel, one through four, five through eight, and so on. Three by three, a nine view and a 16 view if you have a 16 channel recorder. Um, the live mode, so we're in a general view right now where we see our cameras, or we can go to the AI mode. So we have the sidebar over here. Anytime that we have an event, so we have a, a target cross into our detection areas, we're gonna see those live action results pop up on our screen. So uh, hopefully we get a vehicle pass by the area um, pretty soon or I can just walk out on the porch real quick and create an alert. So we see those tripwire triggers happen and my classification was as a human. So let's go back into the menu, AI. Now we can search, we can search events. We could say, show me the AI events that happened um, today between what time and what time. So we're gonna go with uh, 14, say 1430 and later in the day. I can search. Oops, that was face detection. All right, we're gonna do a, uh, AI search. Four, say so eight. And we see my events in here. So this really gets, uh, helps you with your uh, uh, investigations. So you don't have to sit through hours and hours of timeline footage clicking around. This takes you to your actual events. So that is an AI search. You select the search type that you are subscribed to. So we have IBS and SMD alerts we subscribe to. Um, and you can go through channel by channel and search. Uh, you can get granular with your searches as well. So we know that channel two was our AI camera. We could say that I want to know the intrusion alerts and only show me only show me humans. So if we had enough recorded history, we could play that back now. So that is your AI IBS search. Regular playback. Let's uh, go to, since our reboot here. So we can click around on our timeline. It's going to take us to our, uh, wherever we click, it'll jump right to that point. All of our channels will play back at the same time. We can stop and deselect individual channels, different groups. We are going to do just one channel at a time. Click on the timeline and we're going to scroll in. By moving the mouse, you can scroll in. Um, we have this uh, scrubbing tool. So as we move this, you can see the, the action on the screen change. So we can move this scrubbing tool back and forth, or we can also hold our mouse on the screen and we can see the snapshots on the bottom row. So these are helpful uh, searching uh, tools when you want to uh, not have to sit through the video. You wanna see what's happening, uh, in multi-window view. And you can click on that box, click on that box, and it jumps you to those snapshots, okay? Now we're doing our investigation and we wanna create a backup. We're gonna to have to um, 
use this trim tool. We're doing our investigation. Click the trim tool. This is the start of our event. We're going to let the event play out. Click the trim tool again and hit our save disk. Now you'll need a thumb drive plugged in to export this. So if we hit backup and there's no thumb drive plugged in, you're going to get this error. Uh, error. It will be our DAV format. The Our Dowel Media Player will automatically be included in that download. And I'll show you another way to do your backup. So back here in the main menu, we have the backup tab. We're going to go here. We do not have a thumb drive in there, so it's not going to let us uh, do a backup at the moment, but we can uh, still go through the process. So for channel one, um, on today's date from 1430 to 1440, for channel one, I want this to be an MP4 file. I'm going to search. There's my event. If I had a thumb drive plugged in, I click the uh, one click backup and it's going to dump that information for me onto the drive. So if you chose DAV, that will automatically include the player. And then you can go through channel by channel and then back that up. Channel three, search. Then you can back that up. So it's very quickly to recover those, uh, the timeline footage that you're seeking for multiple channels. Okay. Maintain. So uh, updating your firmware is uh, very important for the devices to make sure they have the latest um, the latest firmware, the latest technology, and the latest features so that it works seamlessly with the mobile app and uh, the cameras. So we'll go to update. Um, you can tell what the build date you currently have is. So I'm on the latest one. I'm on the February 21st, 2020 build date. Dowelwiki.com is a good resource for uh, our firmware. We also have an auto update. Depending on the current model that you're on and the current build date that is on the system, you could do manual check and it will tell you if you're on the latest firmware, okay? So we're on the latest. So if we were connected um, uh, online to a P2P service, this would tell us if there was a new version available for us. Again, depending on what the current version you were on, okay? So that is your basic setup. Uh, 